So in this segment, we're going to be turning the Kerbers we previously made into G-code using FlatCam version 8.4. To do that, I'm going to take these are the Gerbers that we made earlier. I'm going to select my artwork files and my drill file, and I'm going to copy them into a new directory, which I'm calling Fabrication File Set. Okay. Move that aside. Alright. So, flat cam 8.4. We open our Gerber, our top artwork. If you've done everything correctly, it should be scaled correctly. You can double check with the uh, scale to the left and make sure you're in the correct units that you want. Um, the way flat cam works is the project. Uh, items are context sensitive to the selected tab. So you can either select this and hit selected or you can double click and it will go there anyway. I like double clicking. Alright, so the tool I'm going to be using in this case is from Precise Bits and it is the 71 mil uh, what do they refer to it as tapered stub end mill. Okay. All right, so I want to clear out the copper in between each of these pads. To do that, we need to do more than one pass. So it will route around and then route around further, depending on the uh, number of passes you put. In this case, it's going to take three, but you can experiment. And uh, I'm going with the general um, recommended value of 30%. So this is... Uh, uh, you know, fraction of one or 30 percent here, and you want to usually combine all the passes together, so you only have one file. All right, and the rest of the stuff we can ignore for the moment. So we click generate. It will make our our vector path for us. There's our three passes, and if we go back to project, you'll see that we have a r underscore iso file now and uh, ISO is short for isolation double click on that we get more of this stuff but we only care about the top again so this is where we're going to be creating our G code so we need to well not specifically our, our cutting profile but um, we're doing one ounce copper in this case so in metric that's uh, approximately 0.1 millimeters Z travel is the height between jumps when it finishes and moves over to another part of the path. So we're at uh, 0.1 inches or 2.54 millimeters. Your feed rate is like all standard feeds and speeds dependent on your tool and um, your, your CNC mills capabilities um, and the material you're going through. We've had pretty good luck with uh, 508 uh, millimeters per minute. This has been measured in minutes. Um, if you're, and it's, this value is dependent on what units you're using here. This translates to 20 inches per minute. Okay. Uh, and again, here's my uh, 71 mil uh, bit in metric. Uh, if you're running pure G-code, uh, you can put the spindle speed in. Uh, with the ShopBot desktop we were about to use, uh, this doesn't have any value. So we're going to skip it and hit Generate. Okay, so you should get this nice blue trace. That is the thickness of your bit. And if this was a uh, large design it can take a little while that came up pretty quick and you'll have a little status update in the lower right hand corner here alright so if we go over here you'll now have a new file called art iso cnc if you double click on that you want to put your tool diameter again in from what you had before and then you can get your g-code by exporting down here so
uh, you, they don't give you any hints or anything. You just have to come up with your own name. I use the extension NC, which is typical for G code. All right, and you just save that. And now you have your G code for. Bring that over here for your. Um, uh, For your machine. All right. So next we're going to drill. So now we're going to Exxon. Exxon. We pick our drill file. Double click. All right. So the gotcha here is you're if you have more than one size, you'll have a big long list, and you have to select which ones you want. And you can either do a generated drill CNC profile with drill bits or you can do a mill uh, CNC profile if you have multiple holes and you have an end mill that can cut multiple holes uh, different hole sizes um, but if you don't select anything here and you hit generate like I just did nothing happens okay so make sure you select a tool and we're gonna be drilling here we're not gonna be milling so uh, the parameters we care about are the cut depth, which is cut Z. We're using um, 63 mil PCB stock, so that's 1.65 millimeters in my case. And make sure we go all the way through, we're doing 2 millimeters. Z travel again is the height between paths, path jumps. Um, I have that set to 0.1 inches. 2.54 millimeters uh, and you can pretty much pick any height that will accommodate those, um, uh, whatever you have in the hold down so if you have to go over a screw or something you're gonna have to increase that so you don't hit it feed rate again is uh, what I'm using from before and uh, uh, then you have the same speed and all that. So we're going to pick our tool and hit generate. Alright, so now we get our drill CNC file. Tool diameter again. We're using a one millimeter um, tool. Doesn't really matter. It's, it's, it's not going to cut anything. It's just moving. And we will export the G-code. So Drill. Let's see. Okay. Well, now we're going to do the bottom. All right. So now our drawing is looking really cluttered. We can fix that by going to View, Disable All Plots, but this one. Ta da! There's our bottom. Okay, so we're going to double click on that, and it's the same as the top. Okay, but before we do that, we want to go not to this tool tab, which never has anything in it. You go to this tool tab, and we're doing a double sided PCB, so we have to click this. All right, so because we're flipping this thing around on the CNC mill to uh, route the rear, we, uh, we have to flip um, the artwork, otherwise your holes won't line up and your pads, or your uh, uh, traces will be connected incorrectly if you do. Anyway, so we pick our bottom artwork and we are going to be, it's the, I think this depends on which way you plan to flip it, but we are going to flip it along the y-axis and you can pick your point that you want to flip it around. Okay, and we're going to flip it around dead center. So, zero comma zero. All right. Now, if you watch these traces, you see they hop to the other side. Okay. So now we're mirrored. Now we go back to the artwork. And now we can create our paths, and we're using the same settings as the top layer. Ta-da! All right. 
go to the ISO, same settings as before. Now we have our back, get going, same tool diameter, export the G-code. Okay, so there's one more thing we want to make from the bottom, and that's the actual board cutout. So we go to artwork, and while we were doing all this, now we're moving down to another function, which is the board cutout. I'm going to be using a 2.5 millimeter end mill. Um, Flat Cam does have the ability just to look at your existing artwork and put a essentially a random border around it based off of the furthest extents. Um, I don't think that's all that valuable. So our margin is going to be zero. Um, gap size. What you don't see in the artwork is our zero dimension um, uh, our zero dimension outline. Okay. Our gap size is 1.5. This is for your tabs. So we're going to do a top and bottom tab. This is left and right, and then there's four tabs. This is a small piece, so two tabs will be fine. And this is the gap between essentially the width of the tab. So you do all that, and you click Generate. And it makes another vector cutout. Okay. Now we head back over to the project. Okay, so one of the limitations of flat cam is everything has to be done a single pass. All right, so we've got to go a lot slower, and we also have to cut through the whole PCB. So we're going to cut two millimeters. Z travel is the uh, jump height again. Our feed rate has to be lower because we're going to be cutting through two millimeters in a single pass. So we're going to drop it down to. Mm, Let's go half the our speed. There, two tool diameter. Okay. So this is 254 millimeters per minute. So we're gonna hit generate. All right. So there's our final cutout, and that will be our PCB. So over here, tool diameter 2.5. Now we got export. Okay, we bring our things back over here. You'll see we've made our, out of our three artwork files, we made four um, G code files. All right, now if your CNC mill is capable of running straight G code, you're done. But we're doing a, using a shop bot, and they have their own language, and while it Supposedly can run G code if you attempt to uh, run this, you'll get a complaint and you'll get a. Uh, so, here's an example of the uh, G code from the drill file. You'll get a complaint that you can't, it doesn't understand G94, which is the feed rate. Um, so, we're going to have to do some file conversion and some cleanup, which I'll explain in the next segment.